Hi guys, it's Chris at the Automate Recycler. Here we have a pile of padlocks. Uh, there's all sorts. There's some Aussie made Lockwood ones. That's an old Yale Junior. I don't know where that's made. Uh, most of these are actually Lockwood, but there's a few strange brands. I have given them a little bit of a clean up. That's why some of them look polished, just to read the brands. Um, when I'm cleaning out sheds, I turn up old padlocks all the time. Uh, I keep them aside until I've sort of finish the job just in case the keys turn up and sometimes they do but invariably I get a huge pile of padlocks that don't have keys uh, and I throw them all generally in a bucket and I'll put all these back in the bucket now and what I've kind of just been thinking all right well most of them are brass um, and I could sell them for scrap metal but then again they're not pure brass, even the ones with a brass shackle still have um, springs and things in there which won't be brass so at best they could be only sold as dirty brass or irony, irony brass I don't even know what the price is at the moment for that um, brass, clean brass is around about $4 a kilo it fluctuates a lot and with the world in a bit of a crisis at the moment I would imagine prices are going to drop so I'll just continue to put these in here. So even if they were clean brass, that tub full, not full, but that tub lot weighs around about six kilos. So at $4, that's only about $24. Uh, and that's only if it was pure brass. So contaminated brass, uh, I don't know, let's guess at 50 cents a kilo. I'm not sure what it would be worth. But six kilos at 50 cents is only $3. So there's really not much value for scrap. Still better than throwing them out. And most people I know that turn up an old padlock when they're cleaning a shed, no key, they'd throw, probably just put it in the bin. But throw them in a bucket. Um, if nothing else, you're gonna get a few dollars for them for dirty brass. But what I'm gonna do, because most of these are um, sea chrome, not sea chrome, sorry, most of them are Lockwood, Australian made brands. And people do collect padlocks uh, and one like this here it's quite a modern padlock and I would think that would be a very expensive lock to buy there's a pretty good chance that I don't know, it's even branded by a local locksmith it's a pretty good chance that a locksmith could have a key for it um, so really for a matter of a few cents for scrap I'm gonna put these on eBay and we'll see how we go see if we can make some money out of it so I've sorted these in a few, into a few groups. I've cleaned up the other ones that were a bit grubby so we can read the brands. Uh, so that selection are all slightly different and they're all Australian made Lockwood padlocks. Uh, and this section were all the unusual brands. Some of them are probably only cheap ones and I did notice that that one's made in Taiwan. Um, but look, it makes a, a little collection. We'll um, run them through eBay and see how we go. The Yale ones, well, as you may have noticed, this bigger one isn't locked, but it, it has all its guts removed. So, uh, it, look, it may be handy for parts for a locksmith. This little Yale Junior, I think, would be quite a collectible one. And out of all these, if I was going to put one in the shop, I would put that one in the shop. But it gives a bit of value to these other padlocks that are missing their lock assemblies. So, we'll try those Yale ones as a group. Uh, there's another group of Lockwood ones here. Uh, this one still has a couple of chain links on it. Uh, no keys with any of them, as I've explained. And this last lot here, there's a couple of duplicates. Three of those are actually the same. However, that's, I think, probably a good value one. And the larger one there is, is not a bad example either. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five different eBay lots. And as far as the auction goes, well, I'll, I'll probably start them... I could put that lot on for, I don't know, let's say $20 on that lot. Now, let's go 30 and I'll offer free postage. Um, they will package up in a small satchel in Australia, which will be under $10 anywhere in Australia. Um, so if I start the listing at 30 but have it as an auction, that gives the opportunity for a few bidders to come along if they do see good value in it and the price may go higher. Or I might just get the one bid at 30 and be happy with that. So these other ones, the oddball ones, I don't think there's anything particularly good in that. Most of them seem fairly modern. 
I might just start them at 20 and offer free postage. So if I get 10 bucks a lot, I'd be happy. Uh, the Yale one's probably much the same. As I said, I think the older junior one is the only one of real value there, but a locksmith may see better value than I do. The beauty about eBay is that you are exposing items to a huge cross-section of people so you're going to get the professional locksmiths that may recognize which is worth fixing up you're going to get the collectors that may recognize that just for example you know this lockwood one here with the patent number on it might be hard to get probably not because i think there's another one over here but the beauty is you never know and i did once sell a padlock that i didn't think was anything special and it made over a thousand dollars so this should be an interesting little experiment. Remembering that for scrap value, it was only about $3. It's not going to take very long to photograph them and put listings on. So I'll get that organised today. And we'll keep track of how the auctions go. And we'll see how it works out. So here's my eBay page, or part of my seller's page. And you've got to love eBay. Have a look at this. Um, there's seven assortment lock, uh, locks here. The different brands. Has uh, I started that at $20. That's up to 42. We're only three days in. I always like to run my auctions for 10 days. Uh, 14 bids. 14 bids to go $22. So it's just creeping up. But look, I am quite surprised that these had so much interest. Um, a single bid on the Lockwood ones each group. I started each of those at 30. Uh, we haven't got a bid on the Yale ones yet. There's not even any watches. So they're perhaps not that sought after. But I'm pretty impressed with these Lockwood ones. Just shows you that eBay is a great marketing tool because you don't have to have knowledge on every area. You just have to have a bit of a hunch that they might do better than, than what you could do otherwise. And always, I think, always start things in the auction format if you don't know much about them. Um, if they've been through two or three times and not getting a bid, well, that's fine. You know, then you can just list and buy it now or drop the price. So 42, 30, 30, 30 what's that 90 it's 132 dollars i am offering free postage so if they go to individual buyers that'll obviously eat into it however if you notice here true boot blue locks is on this one he's also on the next one and he's on the last one so if one buyer buys a few lots that helps me out because i've only got one lot of postage so look i'm pretty happy with that um I'm actually amazed. I didn't think they'd get that much interest. I thought we might snag one bidder on each of them or maybe relist once or twice. So um, we'll leave them for the rest of the 10-day duration. Uh, I have had one potential bidder email me to say, would I do a buy it now, which I never do, not on the first run through, because you don't know if one lock happens to be, as I mentioned earlier, happens to be a $1,000 lock. But look, it's going fantastic, much better than scrap metal. Um, a zillion times better than putting it in the bin so we'll um, leave that run the rest of its auction and I'll show you the screenshot at the end and see if they've all sold and what price they got okay and here's the results of the padlock auctions after 10 days the Yale padlocks didn't sell at all there was only one watcher on that group so I think the, um, the little Yale Junior one I think I'll put that on um, in the shop for like five dollars or something just to move it on the other two I can confidently put in the scrap now But have a look at these 18 bids in the, on this group of they were the assorted brands made fifty dollars This group of Lockwood ones made 52 with six bids This group of six Lockwood locks made 3601 with four bids and this last group seven bids got it to fifty one dollars I'm very impressed with that um, I added up the total once we've taken eBay fees into account and the free postage on each lot. They went to separate buyers. So even with the, I think it was $8.95 postage on each lot, they all went within Australia. And my profit margin was still just over $135. So that's a damn sight better than the scrap metal bin. What was that? $3, I think, for all these locks. $135 profit, a little bit of time. Uh, they were easy enough to post because even Australia Post probably can't damage padlocks. And uh, I'm very happy. I'm sure my buyers are happy. And it's a great little experiment where we've turned scrap or possible scrap into much better value. So I hope you enjoyed that adventure. Thanks for watching. We'll do some more of these type of um, videos if you're inter interested. I'm doing a lot more on eBay now that we've uh, 
our shops are closed due to the coronavirus and uh, I do I've always loved eBay it's a great way to uh, to find treasures that you don't even know you've got all right catch you in the next video bye